Have you ever wondered if there's more to reality than what we can see and touch? Imagine a world beyond our current understanding where the possibilities are endless. For centuries, philosophers and spiritual leaders have spoken of a higher state of being, a shift in consciousness that allows us to transcend the limitations of our current reality. But what does this really mean? And is it even possible? Hi, I'm Jamie, and we help sincere aspirants through the tough challenges of their spiritual awakening. We've given hundreds of people the tools to transform their inner world and have introduced them to the blueprint to inner freedom as outlined by the yogic tradition. So they know that they aren't alone and so that they can get unstuck from their conditioning, their patterning, and start taking miraculous strides in their lives towards freedom and ultimate liberation. So let me tell you a story. Our story begins here with a man on a quest for truth, delving deep into the mysteries of the universe and the nature of reality. He discovers ancient wisdom and hidden knowledge, but as he gets closer to the truth, he realizes that the journey is not for the faint of heart. There are three clear stages to this path of consciousness and realization and embodiment. And I'm not going to go ahead and pretend that I really understand what 3D to 5D means in the New Age spiritual communities, but I can do my best to use that keyword because uh, it's really good. The spiritual stuff's uh, really, you know, it's hot now on YouTube. I do my best because it's a hot topic at the moment to share what I experience in relationship to this. So back to our story, our young whippersnapper. He feels disconnected from life. He feels totally separate from the outside world. He only knows his body and his mind as his reality. And he isn't really aware of any other dimension of life apart from this. It's him against the world. Well, this I would say is 3D consciousness. But now our friend has had some kind of life altering experience, be it through deep grief or some kind of otherworldly mystical experience that happens within him. This opens him up to an extra dimensional aspect of himself that was always present in him, but was clouded by the mind. Now he has found some kind of felt or feeling presence or feeling awareness in his beingness. This beingness grows, but so does his mind and his mental beliefs. He's in a real tug of war between stillness and mental turmoil. Our hero now is still in separation, but there is still, in a way, a limited me in him that struggles to find a solid foundation. He's still separate from beingness, but there's a little bit of spaciousness between him and his mind. He's beginning to desire his stillness more than the mind, but the fight continues. Our hero is now in 4D consciousness. But our friend knows that there is more. He's beginning to lose his desire for things outside of himself because he realizes that ultimately, these are not the things that will bring him fulfillment because fulfillment is an internal process and he begins to merge. He knows he cannot fight the mind or the emotions, so he begins to merge with the strong sensations in the body. No resistance at all. No longer is he a separate entity in the mind suffering these sensations like emotions and thoughts or experiences, but he now becomes one with them. And as he does that, he realizes, ah, there is no me. There's no him. The him or the he, he was battling and wrestling with, with just thoughts believed in with identity. But as the final battle ensues for his freedom, the mind comes and offers him all of his dreams on a plate. The fancy car, the big house, worldwide fame, and he rejects them all to stand victorious in his seat of true power or truth, his identityless freedom, his stillness, his feeling. Here, he's free from the attachment to the mind. He's conquered the forces of good and evil. He's merged with life. He's unified his consciousness. He's in 5D. See, whatever the true meaning of 3D, 4D, 5D consciousness is, there really are three modes of experience. The first one is separation. 
there's a me on the inside and then there's others on the outside. I'm separate to life. Secondly, then we can perhaps deepen into coexisting with that separation. Anything inside the system, like a strong sensation or emotion, yeah, there's still a me and the emotion, but I'm learning and training myself to be with those emotions as if I'm something separate. But then there's this third idea that's not an idea if we do it, and it's merging. This way, when we merge with the experience of life, we find union. And that's what yoga is all about. It's what it actually translates to, union. In this state, there's no separation at all. So I hope my little story gives you an insight of how this journey is going to go and the battles that we must endure to become victorious. This is possible for anyone who's earnest on the path. And if that's you, we'd like to talk with you. And you can book a call down below to come and have a chat with us. But whatever you do, if you're wanting to dive deeper on the path, there are a few things you must know, like the biggest obstacle to your freedom. And we've made a video here, and you can watch that. The biggest obstacle for your path, the biggest obstacle to spiritual growth.